Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you strategies on how to hear better. Coming up. It's no secret that humans love to talk. In fact, one of the main ways that we separate ourselves in the animal kingdom is through our use of complex language for social connection and communication. Even with the increasing popularity of text and email, 70% of our communication on a given day is verbal. But while we love to communicate, humans are notoriously poor communicators. There are many ways that we sabotage our own communication such as speaking softly or quickly, cutting eye contact or turning our backs, or even yelling messages from rooms away. Even with normal hearing, miscommunication happens all of the time. But add a hearing loss to the mix and conversations can quickly switch from fulfilling to frustrating. Communication is a two-way street that requires effort from both the speaker and the listener in order to be most effective. Luckily, it doesn't take much to turn poor communication into excellent communication with a few quick fixes. That's why today I'll be beginning a two-part video series on how to make communication easier and quite frankly, better beginning on the side of the listener. But before we do that, if you could please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps videos like these reach a wider audience. And if you haven't already, take a moment to hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. If you have hearing loss, the first step in improving communication as a listener is using hearing aids that have been properly fit and programmed by a hearing healthcare professional who follows best practices. Hearing aids are incredible pieces of technology that allow you to participate in different conversations and situations that hearing loss may have otherwise disqualified you from. And while high quality hearing treatment is critical to hearing your best, even the most advanced hearing aids programmed perfectly cannot overcome poor communication. If you have a hearing loss, it's natural to think all of the ways that you could hear better if other people just spoke the way that you needed them to. But there are many ways that you can improve your communication, even as the listener. First, ask for repetition when you need it and make sure you're asking the right way. Many people feel like a burden or fear that they're annoying the other person if they ask someone to repeat themselves several times. But sitting back, smiling or nodding to something that you didn't actually hear isn't good for you or them. It can make them feel as though you're not paying attention and can even lead to embarrassing moments where they question if you're even listening to them. In these situations, it is important to ask for clarification so that you can remain engaged in the conversation. But it's important to note just how you're asking for repetition. If you feel like you're saying what or huh over and over again, and that message is no easier to hear, you need to be more specific on what would help you hear your best. Maybe they're speaking too quickly, too softly, or they continue turning their back to you. Using the phrase, I can't hear you, leaves room for miscommunication to happen again, especially if the speaker doesn't know what to change about their delivery. Instead, you could say, I'm really interested in this story, and it's difficult for me to hear your voice well at that level. Would you mind speaking up a bit? Hearing difficulties can often be misinterpreted as the listener needing repetition because they are not paying attention, which generally isn't the case. When asking for repetition, it is important to repeat back the information that you did hear so that they know that you were listening and can help you fill in any missing gaps. The second thing you can do to improve communication is to be your own advocate. While the people closest to you may know that you have hearing loss, people that you encounter out in public or are meeting for the first time may not know that you have hearing difficulties. In these instances, if you're having trouble hearing someone, it can be incredibly helpful to let them know that you have hearing loss. It may take time to feel confident in informing new people that you meet of your hearing loss, but just remember that a majority of people are willing to do better but only if they know better. Advocating for your needs can be especially beneficial in challenging listening environments. For example, informing your restaurant host that you are hard of hearing can allow them to seat you in a quieter area, letting you enjoy your meal with family and friends. In a work setting, many employers are more than willing to provide accommodations because they know that it only allows you to do your job even better. If large group meetings are challenging for you, you may be able to request that meeting minutes be sent to you afterwards, 
or schedule a quick debrief with a coworker who can answer any lingering questions. Many companies are also willing to provide assistive listening devices to improve your hearing in these settings and even transcription services that can record meetings and transcribe them into text notes for you to review later. However, your workplace can only better support you if they know what you need to succeed. So be sure to advocate for what allows you to do your best work. You may even need to advocate for yourself in your own home, especially if the design layout isn't allowing you to hear your best. In the home, you will want to reduce distance and reverberation as much as possible to keep speech clear and understandable. This may require rearranging the layout of the living room to put your recliners closer together or to move your couch closer to the TV. Or maybe you swap your long dining room table and mood lighting for a round table with brighter lighting, allowing you to see everyone's faces as they're speaking. You may even add in some area rugs, curtains, or throw pillows to help absorb that echo that can make it harder to hear. I encourage you to take a walkthrough of your home with those that you live with in order to identify areas that continue to cause communication problems. As lighting, distance, and echo generally cause the greatest hearing difficulties, brainstorm ideas on how you can limit these factors so that you can relax and unwind in your own home rather than struggle to hear. Another excellent strategy you can use to improve communication is to do your research and be prepared for challenging listening environments. For example, using an app like SoundPrint allows you to see noise levels and ratings of public spaces like coffee shops and restaurants. Armed with insights like average attendance during different times, seating options, and music and lighting levels, you can pick a place that's easier for you to hear before you even go. For more information on this excellent app, be sure to check out my sound print review video that will be linked in the description below. If your hearing aids have telecoil technology and you plan to travel, be sure to use a resource such as loopfinder.com to find museums, churches, and even theaters with hearing loops installed. Just keep in mind that their database is not comprehensive, so it might be a good idea to call ahead as well. Dr. Cliff's video on all things telecoil technology will also be linked in the description below, so be sure to check it out. In these situations, a little bit of research and preparation in advance can save you from fatigue and frustration during things that should be Fun. Finally, it is important that you maintain realistic expectations for your hearing, your hearing aids, and from other people in challenging listening situations. Large gatherings of people nearly always result in high levels of background noise, worsened by poor acoustics, overhead music, and design layouts that are geared toward aesthetics rather than functionality. In these situations, you may exhaust every single communication strategy in the book and still find it hard to hear, confirmed by those around you with normal hearing who also struggle to hear. In these situations, it's important that you do not become discouraged, but rather use it as an opportunity to identify what did work and what you'd like to try the next time you're in a similar situation. Be sure to relay these challenging experiences to your hearing healthcare provider, as they may be able to adjust hearing aid settings, add custom programs, or recommend assistive listening devices that can greatly improve your communication in these settings. Hearing loss doesn't mean that you can't have excellent communication communication. You just need to develop and practice communication strategies so that you can hear your best. Remember that most people, especially those that love and care about you, are more than willing to do whatever is needed in order to improve your communication. They just might need awareness of your difficulties and some helpful suggestions in order to make your communication great. That being said, make sure that you stay tuned for part two of this video series outlining easy ways that your communication partner can take your conversations from frustrating to fulfilling. That's it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it with someone that you feel could use it. And as always, make sure you've hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos.